there is negative vibes surrounding this year from the very beginning. From the very start, it was marred with tragedy after tragedy. And now this, that's put the entire world into crisis mode, the markets are crashing, trillions of dollars in losses over three days because of fears of the coronavirus and how it could affect China's factories and how China could then obviously is a very big part of this chain reaction that could lead to a major economic collapse on a global scale. Brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Imagine for a second that you are a fisherman somewhere in the Pacific Ocean, in the Marshall Islands perhaps, or the country of Nauru. You recognize that there are some changes happening around you that just don't make any sense. For example, you notice that year after year, sea levels are rising or you notice some very severe weather patterns that you weren't used to before. You notice and make the observation that cyclones and tornadoes are happening with greater frequency and severity. As you observe all of these changes taking place around you and affecting your life and your livelihood, you try to make some sense out of it, but you can't. It just doesn't add up. What you require is access to data, to statistics on a global scale. When you do that, you'll come to the recognition that these changes are in fact part of a global problem. And they're caused by massive corporations that are profiteering off of our planet's scarce resources. They're caused by fossil fuel combustion that release greenhouse gas emissions into the atmosphere. They're caused by coal production. They're caused by all of these different major global environmental factors. Only then will you be able to understand that this is contributing to the temperature in the earth rising, glaciers melting, and sea levels rising. Now, Take this example and apply it to the global outbreak of the novel coronavirus and COVID-19. If you try to make sense of this, the way government and medical professionals are operating, and by the way, it's important that you listen to the instructions given to you by medical professionals, but as important as their work is, the fact of the matter is that all they try to do is control the fallout and look at the problem from a purely ecological and biological perspective. And we talked about this in my previous episode. What we need to do though, is take a bird's eye view, zoom all the way out to recognize the root causes of these problems. We need to appreciate the magnitude of this. There is negative vibes surrounding this year from the very beginning. From the very start, it was marred with tragedy after tragedy. And now this, that's put the entire world into crisis mode, the markets are crashing, trillions of dollars in losses over three days because of fears of the coronavirus and how it could affect China's factories and workers and how China could then obviously is a very big part of this chain reaction that could lead to a major economic collapse on a global scale. And that's not even addressing the medical aspect of it. And so this entire year from the very get go has been marked with tragedy after catastrophe, after crisis. And so the point I'm trying to make here is that the way we lead our lives today is unsustainable. The way 
we see oppression and injustice all around us, that's not sustainable. Whether that oppression and injustice is perpetrated by state actors, by governments against people in the form of war, bloodshed and carnage, right? What we're seeing in Yemen, for example, what we see in other parts of the world, that's not sustainable. Or whether that oppression and injustice is perpetrated by single individuals against other individuals. Whether a husband oppressing his wife or a wife oppressing her husband, or it's children disrespecting their parents and not affording them their due care and respect. Whatever it is, the oppression that we are engaged in is not sustainable. The way we lead our lives, the way we behave around other people, the way we treat each other is not sustainable. The way we conduct ourselves online and offline, on social media and in real life is not sustainable. The way we commit sins one after the other without the slightest remorse is not sustainable. We can't go on living our lives the way we are today and not expect repercussions. We cannot possibly continue in these behaviors and in these sins and expect everything to be hunky-dory. That's just not how things work. If this is a reminder, which it is, if this is a wake-up call, then we need to check ourselves. We need to re-examine our priorities and our, the way we behave. We need to wake up. And I'd like to offer three points for your consideration. The first is repent. Go back to the very source. Return to your Lord and Creator. Let's show and express remorse for our actions and the things which have brought us to where we are today. See God's forgiveness. One tradition says that there were two things shielding this world from God's punishment and from chastisement. One was the holy messenger of God, the prophet of mercy, Muhammad. May God's peace and blessings be upon him and upon his family. But when he was taken, when he passed into the afterlife, we were left only with one more shield that protects us. And that was the shield of repentance, istighfar. The Holy Prophet himself would repent to God 70 times in the daytime and 70 times in the evening. And that's without committing a single sin. We need to repent. We need to acknowledge our sins. We need to come to the recognition that we have been sinful, that we have gone wrong. And so repenting does exactly that. It, it strips us of the arrogance that's encapsulated our hearts and hardened our souls. That arrogance needs to go away. That's part of this test. That's part of why the entire world is now scrambling for, for, for ways to address this problem. To recognize your inherent deficiency and your vulnerability, your intrinsic weakness where a tiny virus can wreak this kind of havoc across the entire planet. Let's recognize our weakness, our sins, and repent to God for those sins. A moment of retrospection. Find that one sin which you find yourself continuously engaged in and make a vow, make an oath, make a promise to God that I will stop committing that sin. Just be sincere. Be sincere for once and say, here is one thing that I'm embroiled in and I'm troubled by and I'd like to stop doing this for the sake of God. Number one. Number two, let's pray. Constant prayer and invocation. Trying to reach out to God. Trying to ask Him for mercy and help on a communal basis. So if you can do this perhaps with your family, then that's beautiful. If you can try to get the community together, that's even better. Organizing programs and events where we just get together and pray is a beautiful thing and a gesture of goodwill. And finally, help those who are in need. Many of you have friends and family who are in areas affected by the coronavirus. Try and help them out, right? Many people are suffering now. Uh, there is economic collapse. There is uh, currencies crashing down. There's all kinds of problems there. Medical supplies are needed. Help out. The Ahlul Bayt Foundation is running an appeal. Help out with whichever way you can. 
with whatever amount you can. But if you have your own relatives and family members, then reach out to them first, right? Because the hadith says, Dawu marvakum bis sadaqah. Cure your sick loved ones by giving charity to other people, right? Try and prevent the, the disease from reaching you with an act of kindness and pay it forward. Show kindness to those who are in need so that you may not be in a position where you need other people's help. Right? InshaAllah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.